Grids. We've heard some very thoughtful remarks uh, this morning about the importance of the internal market for the continued growth, competitiveness of Europe for the growth industries that need to carry uh, us towards the future. And on the why question, well, here's a good answer. Electromobility. We have 8 million electric cars on the roads in Europe today. By 2030, it may be 50 million, it may be 70 million, depending on what study we consult. As Leo was saying before, all these studies are great, we love them, we do them, um, but we also know that we're not always gonna be 100% right. What we do know is the mega trend, the tendency, we are going electric. It's not only the cars, it's the heat pumps, Increasingly, it's the industry. So the future, ladies and gentlemen, is increasingly electric. What that means for our power consumption is that it's gonna be different. In the past three decades, we've had very modest growth of electricity demand. In recent years, right at the cusp of this takeoff, in fact, electricity demand has been dropping. But if we want to deliver on our plans, on our ambitions to go green, that needs to change. That's what the future is gonna look like in terms of demand, if we want to deliver and do it with a necessary pace, as um, mentioned by Tuma. Before we shift, please have a look at those um, factors on the right-hand side, factor 20, factor 8, factor 60. These are the change factors in the electricity system, on the demand side, on the supply side. What that shows us, ladies and gentlemen, is that keeping the lights on in this situation is a big challenge, a technically challenging transformation, ladies and gentlemen, where we change our sector and hook up with new and used sectors in a different way than we have before. On top, the backdrop is becoming more and more complex. Cyber attacks are on the rise, the factor six. More attacks, more successful attacks. Your electric was attacked a few months ago. They didn't succeed, thank God, but um, this is real and all the companies are struggling with this. More occurrences of extreme weather all the member states of Europe are grappling with this in different ways. Floods, heat waves, torrential rains, you name it. Huge impacts on the energy system and more complexity for the transformation. On top of that, new expectations from customers. Not only the households, not only the individuals that want new services, cheaper energy, also the industrials increasingly knocking on the door, adding challenges to this transition. And, ladies and gentlemen, our grids are aging. More than a third of all distribution grids in Europe are more than 40 years old. Now, I will always defend that the 40s are the new 20s, but I also know that that is perhaps a truth with modifications. So the question, is investment in distribution grids keeping up with this massive takeoff that is needed in order for us to deliver on our green ambitions? Let's take the good news first. Incremental increases in investment year on year, 8% over the past four years. Is that enough? I think you guessed that. We need much more. We need to double investments in distribution grids 
compared to the last four years. If we average that, we're talking 33 billion per year. That figure needs to go, ladies and gentlemen, to 67 billion per year from now until 2050. What's all that money going to be used for? Well, we need reinforcements to tackle new demand. We, knew we need replacements and renewables of these aging grids. We need reinforcements for the new generation that's coming online. We need to harden the grids. We need to smarten the grids. In sum, that amounts to 67 billion euros of investments every year, ladies and gentlemen. Sixty-seven billion or lights off. Sixty-seven billion. These figures at EU level, they are daunting. Uh, we all struggle to understand those orders of magnitude. What I've learned, though, in my years in the EU is that we should not panic when we see those big numbers. After all, they are a sum of what 27 countries need to do together. 450 million people that we're serving, big industries we're serving, in order for this to happen. So what we need to do is to put this figure into perspective. Here's another big figure. 451 billion euros of investments, or rather, of payments. These are not investments. They're just payments, money that we send abroad for our fossil fuel imports. Here's what we spent on investments in road and rail in 2021, 100 billion. So even if 67 billion is a lot of money, it's not a crazy amount when we compare to the task we have at hand and uh, with other sectors that also need these investments. And here's another piece of good news. The 67 billion can be significantly reduced if we do things right. By 18%, to be very clear and precise. If we double down now on cooperation between regulators, between authorities, companies, to do what we call anticipatory investments, invest today in the future of Europe, in the long-term future of Europe. If we build grids today for 2040, we don't need to rip up the streets all the time. If we invest today for the long future, we can give that certainty to industry that we can serve the needs and that we're not going to be the bottleneck of the transition. If we add performance excellence on top and mobilize all sources of grid flexibility, then we can bring that bill down very significantly. Plus, there is a promise from new technology, smart transformers, grid observability technologies, such as dynamic line rating, digital twins, and so on and so forth, that can bring down this bill even further. We have very consciously refrained from quantifying that amount that we can save on those types of technologies. What we want to do is to establish a catalog. We want to work with you as a community to identify those technologies that can help bring down the bill further. So this is an invitation for you to participate um, with grid edge technologies, flexibility solutions, um, optimization technologies. In the coming months, we will be compiling that uh, in, with a view to, let's say, informing the discussion about how we can further uh, press down the cost for uh, the necessary infrastructure. So I showed you a figure of 67 billion and a doubling of investments, so I realized that headline might be slightly provocative. No major impact on distribution prices, ladies and gentlemen. But that statement holds true if we electrify. If we electrify, demand picks up 
like we've shown on the charts, like everybody expects it to, like we have in the scenarios, the forecast, the European Commission, in all studies we see out there, there is going to be many more kilowatt hours to distribute those uh, distribution costs on. If we don't electrify, we're going to have a problem with rising shares of distribution in the electricity cost and fewer kilowatt hours to carry those additional investments. Europe is under pressure. We have many priorities these days. Could we not just keep our energy system, our old beautiful energy system as we know it? The answer is no. It is a strategic, a moral, and a logical fallacy for Europe to believe that we can turn our back on the energy transition. We have a direct economic interest in making these investments. 451 billion euros, ladies and gentlemen, that was our import costs of fossil fuels last year. If we steam ahead with these investments and electrify, replace fossil fuels with clean electricity, we can bring that bill down by more than 300 billion euros in the 2040s. These are the figures, by the way, of the European Commission, so they should hold true. If we don't invest, we're going to miss out on our electric future. We're talking some 60 million heat pumps that won't be connected, 70 million cars that won't be connected, hundreds of gigawatts of renewables that won't be able to be connected to the grid and hence not transported to the customers. We are going to miss our climate targets by a very, very wide margin above 30% if we don't start investing now. And we will stay addicted to fossil fuels, and we will stay in the pocket of those pushers of fossil fuels with whom we don't share values. So what is needed for all this to take off? And this is back to the question of Guillaume. First off, regulation. We need to be clear that what, is, what got us here will not get us to the next level. We need step change in regulation. Anticipatory investments and the remuneration systems for that are going to be absolutely key for our success here because we do have a huge financing challenge ahead of us. Where is the money going to come from? At the end of the day, back to Guillaume's question, this money will need to be paid by the people who get the electricity from those wires. But we also have an intergenerational challenge here, because if we build the grids for the long future, they are going to be underutilized in the short term. Future generations are going to benefit from them, and we need to make sure that we don't front load the bill from this, because if we do, we are going to disincentivize electrification. We're going to make it less attractive compared to other fuel carriers, other vectors. So fixing that, squaring that circle on anticipatory investments will be key. Permitting, I don't need to talk to you about permitting. You know that this is a problem. We need to fix this. Supply chain, and I'm very happy we have some of our good friends from the supply chain players here in the room. If we want to double investments, double the build, well, the supply chain needs to scale up very significantly. What are the signals that provide that incentive to scale up? The certainty, long-term procurement arrangements is going to be very, very important. Again, it's linked to the planning, it's linked to the anticipatory investment concept. Last but not least, skills. We're talking about the need for two million people to be educated and capable of doing the job here. So there's a big work in front of us at EU level where we can do certification of educations, but also very much so at national level that control the education systems and of course in the companies to get the right people uh, and educate them uh, as needed. We are in this together, ladies and gentlemen. There's no single company, no single member state, no single institution 
that's gonna solve this. We can only do it if we work together. So I say, let's do this now. Let's build those grids. Let's do it with speed and let's get cracking. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. <laughs>